so today we will discuss about the in the in the here itself in the in the hana studio if you see here in the left side we have the some folders here right we have the some folders here here backup so backup related folder here here we can check the backup so when was the last backup happened and so all the backup related informations we can see it from here all the backup related information we can see it from here the backup related information we can see it here in the the backup here in the backup folder here so when was the last backup completed so is there any configuration changes is required in the backup so then we can change the configuration backup here the catalog what are the last successful backups here all those things we can check from here in the backups here all those things we can check we can check it out from here here we can check that one right so that is the so backups related information here right so the next one let me add the tenant also here the tenant i think uh, here the 07 the tenant id is i think pd7 i guess our guys are created pd7 not the hd7 Is already password wrong. What is the password? Okay, this is the password. I got it here. Okay, this is the tenant here, right? So here you can see the so catalog, catalog. The next one is the catalog here. Normally, so what does it mean by catalog here? The catalog contains. If you expand the catalog, catalog contains the schemas. Catalog contains the schemas here. You have the lot of schemas are available here. Schemas means the owner of the table here schema means owner of the tables here so you suppose like in the organization so we have divisions business units right it basis above so fico sd mm like that we have the teams are available each team there is a manager right so basis manager fico manager sd manager like this we have here each team there is a manager here same as like here so we have the list of schemas are available here. Each schema, these are the owner of the table is called the schema here. Schema, owner of the table. So the group of tables, the group of tables will be in this schema, under the schema. The group of tables will be the schema here, right? If you expand the sys schema here, or if you expand the any schema here, sys schema. Under the schema, these all are the schemas here, owner of the table here. So here, actual tables are available under the schema here. Tables are available where the tables are exist. Normally, as of now, we are discussing about the, so in the database level, data will be stored, right? That what we know. In the database level, data will be stored in the form of tables, right? Where these actual tables are available, how can we see the data? Inside of the database, how can we see the data here? So if you see the list of schemas are available here, schemas. In the schema, if you expand the schema, here we have the tables are available, synonyms. So these all are the, you can ignore, tables are available here. If you expand the tables here, you see there is a hundreds of tables are available. These all are the tables here. These all are the column oriented tables here. Here you have the data here. Here you have the data. In this table, in this table you have the data will be available. Just right click on the table here. Just click on the open data preview. You will see the, the table's data here. The table's data here. Right click and just to open the data preview here. You can see the data here. You can see the how many thousand rows are retrieved in the 243 milliseconds. Just if we click on the execute and then again the duration is reduced. Again the duration is reduced here. So which means Anna, in this way, we can find out Anna is a in-memory column-oriented database. It will store the data in the database in the form of columns. In the form of columns-wise, column store columns-wise, it will store the data here. Columns-wise, it will store the data here. So, as we know, within fraction of milliseconds, we can retrieve the data from the table level. We have thousands of entries. In 58 milliseconds, we retrieved the data from the table. So how fast, which means on fly, we have retrieved the 
tables data database level tables data we have retrieved from the database level we have retrieved it on fly we have retrieved the data from the database level here so that's why so hana is a very one of the fastest database fastest in memory database here so where we can see the tables data means schema catalog under the catalog schemas under the schema tables here if you open any theme schema tables so list of tables are available in the list of schemas here right click and open data preview you will see the so tables here list of the list of entries in the table here these are the list of entries in the table here so the by default you have the some tables filled, filled with the data here some configuration data some tables so those tables related data we can see it here those tables data right click and just to preview the data here what is the data is there the data we can preview it here so not only preview it data what we what we made a one statement is on fly we can make the business decisions which means we can provide the analysis here once you got the raw data from the table live data then you just go to the analysis tab here so then we can we can just just do the analysis of the tables here so like so column name in the x axis the table the table reference number in the y axis so and also here like this we can group name here so like this we can filter it out the the tables here we can just pull the tables details from here tables details we can we just we can make it as a in a graph in we can in the graph wise we can make the one we can make it here in the graph wise we can make the we can make the table entries here in the graph wise here so that live analysis this is the table live analysis fraction of seconds we are going to analyze the table here in which chart war in the what what basis you need this one in the pie chart model if you want just click the pie chart here so that on the live the data will be located here normally we, we will see this type of charts in the in the sales sales organization sales when they are trying to release the product into the market they will find they will check the history history of the their sales here so in which month which year in which date what is the product which is the very huge sales how much percentage all this they will check it out before they release the product into the market they will release all the sales calculations and everything they they will release the product into that mark that that month here so that it will huge collections in that loop. that type of calculations we can perform it here that type of calculation when which chart you required here in that one we can make the our charts here we can make the our charts here pie charts or bar charts or vertical chart or 3d charts so what charts you required so depends upon that one we can make the charts here so that in this way we can find out what is the our sales normally the product related each product related there is a table right sales related tables here if you do the some analysis of the sales related tables then you will find out the graphs wise we can find out here so none of the databases will provide this type of functionality only hana which means as i mentioned fraction of milliseconds we can we can make the business decisions how the our sales is here so if you connect to the our bigger lcd for the screen your graph will be very usable means it will be live updated it will be updated here any record coming to the this picture immediately this graph will be changed here the records will be changed here so this way also we can make the so we can we can perform the analysis of the our tables data we can perform the analysis of the our tables data here tables data here so each and every this is the tables here where the tables are available under the schema where the schema is available under the catalog catalog so schemas each schema there is a different types of each schema there is a different types of tables are available here who will create these tables means we have the system internal tables here when you build the hana system these tables will be created automatically so if you want your own application related tables application will take care of the creation of the tables here so if you want to create your own table your own table suppose you want to create the your own table then then you can create the new table here 
suppose you want to create the own training suppose like suppose i want to create the our training related table here then i can create the uh, i i want to store the our training related so data here right training related data i want to so store here in this case here then who is the schema what is the column oriented what is the name here the training name is here the so member person name here then person name the person phone number here so phone number here th number person name person name number and email id i need these details and when he joined the class which batch all those details i am i am creating here i am creating here so i am creating all the details i am creating the here so insufficient privileges let me create in the system system schema right so table is created here see here so z training z training table is created here you see this are the list of tables here in the list of tables we are the schemas right we are the schema here this is the sys schema so i created the table in the so here so z training table i created here if i just give the data preview so we have the table created member the first member name i can fill it here then phone number email id batch all the students details i can fill it here then so i can also do the some analysis of the member and everything we can do the some graph here all those things i can calculate currently the table is zero records no rows here but because i have not inserted any data here i have not inserted any data here like this we can also create the data here so and also and also we can see here we want to delete we can delete the table also if you want to delete we can delete the table right so if you want to export the table we can export to the our local file system our local file system we can export it here our local file system means your c drive or d drive or your os level file systems we can export it to the current client directory either downloads or where you want to export it just you can export the the data also and also you can also import the table also from from this system to another system we can import the table also and also you want to load into the memory so you want if you suppose this table don't want to load if you, table should be loaded into the memory then there is a cost effective right there is a cost based why because ana 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 data all the data will be residing into the main memory here means our license also related to the main memory only how much memory you want to use it you need to purchase the license for the that much of memory right so if you if this table has been the 2 gb then if you load into the main memory means what will happen all the data all the data if it will load into the main memory here so actual loads of the complete table delta into main memory here so here the license will be increased means the memory usage will be increased the memory usage will be increased if you load into the main memory here no i don't want to this table this is a huge table i don't want to load this table into the main memory i want this table into the i want this table into the my uh my so in the disk storage only my data folder only i want this table in the my data folder only in this case in this case what i can do here i can unload the table from the main memory which means this action unloads the table and data from main memory to disk right yesterday we discussed right so this is the ram memory this is the your file system format right so slash ana data and slash ana log here slash ana so data then slash ana log folder here this is the ram memory here right this is the ram memory here so load into the main memory means if the table is there in the data folder you are loading into the ram memory so if the table is in the ram memory it is very fast faster accessing and also fastly you will get the results and there is no performance issues if the table into the data folder it may take some time to load the data and everything so for this reason also if you want to your manual things you want to load the data unload the data then we can do that one we can do that one load into the memory unload into the memory if you want to perform the delta merge delta merge normally system will take care of the 
the delta merge related operations and everything system will take care of the the delta merge related things and everything system will take care here so you don't want so system is not so uh, uh, system will take care of the all those things and everything here so whenever you just click the delta merge operations here delta merge operations here then what will happen system forcefully will merge the data from delta storage to main storage here which means all committed entries will move the data from the delta storage to main storage here so delta storage delta merge means committed data will move from delta storage to into main storage right main storage here same way so this table is there this table changes are not recorded this table changes are not recorded here this table changes are not recorded here so that so this table uh, this table this table changes are not recorded here then what we can do here this table changes are not recorded so then we can just to perform the delta merge here the committed entries will move to the main memory here main memory here sometimes you book the ticket even though still you are not getting the any updates your transaction is successfully completed but you you, you will you you have not received the you have not received the ticket confirmation but ticket is still showing so in progress only ticket is still showing is not booked by here if you wait for some time your ticket will be booked sometimes what happens in the atm machines or somewhere if you see something so your amount is deducted but the transaction is not updated in your bank account after some time it will be updated here maybe due to some uh, delta merge got delayed or sometimes we need to perform the forced delta merge so that the committed entries will be moved from the delta storage to the main storage here ds to ms which we discussed yesterday here right that we discussed here so this one all things we can do it from the system here if you want to delete we can delete the table also here export import all those things we can perform it in the in the catalog screen here so catalog means where the tables are available means under the catalogs here catalogs here catalogs here in the catalog we can see the all the tables related data and everything here right so content it's a purely developers hana developers that we will call it as the modulars hana developers means modulars here here hana modulars right click on this one right click on the, they will do the their development activity you no need to about the package creations you no need to worry about the so all those things here you no need to worry about the package and everything why because it's a developer responsibility to create the packages analytical packages attributes procedure data so everything they will create it you no need to worry about this purely development related things here right this is a purely development related things here so the next one is the provisioning provisioning here provisioning means so uh, we can we can provision the data from the other databases here we can provision the data from the other databases other remote databases here suppose in your organization you have as of now you have other databases sql server db2 oracle match db you have all the databases you have so right suppose like sql oracle db2 sybase you have all the databases here in our organization you have the four databases here each database you have the data valid financial data sales data you have here right so in this case you don't have much budget you have installed only one hana database here you have only budget to the one hana database so you don't want to budget to the sql server in the other databases oracle should move to the hana databases si base move to the another database db2 should move to the another database means four databases you required here to get into the all the databases right so here you don't have that much of budget here so in this case we have one solution here what is that we can create the remote source to the non hana databases to non hana databases to the sap hana databases here we can create the one remote source from from here to here 
from here to here to a pipe, a kind of one remote source. We can create it here. Remote source, remote, remote connection. Remote connection we can create to the your ANA database. So by using this data provisioning concept here, so here we can create the one remote source here. One remote connection we can create it here, remote source here. So that once you create the connection, which which databases? IBase, ASC, Terabyte, IQ, HANA, Hadoop, Oracle. So any databases, any databases you can create the connection to the any database you can create the connection here. ANA to HANA, ANA to DB2, Spark, Vara, BigQuery. Any database you can create the connection here. So when you create the connection to the any database here, what will happen? Any database here, what will happen here? So, so you can log into the that remote. We can just create the connection. Just you can log into the HANA database. You can just log into the HANA database. You can access the other systems data in single shot. You can access the other system data. That is called the data provisioning. Means you can log into the HANA system. You can provision the all the remote systems HANA databases data into the in from your HANA database. In this case, you don't need to log into this one separately. Separate this one. Separate 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 this one. And you don't need separate user ID, user ID, user ID, user ID here. Just you can create the remote source connection here. Then you can pull the data from the your remote sources here. Your remote sources you can create the connection here so that you can provision the data from here. Why? Because developers, they require the data from the other databases here to club the data from other systems data, to club the data from the other systems data. So we require to club the data from the other system data. They have to provision the data from the other remote sources here, other remote source to club the data from the other remote sources here. So that is what so we can do it from here. That is what we can do it from here. So that is the remote data sources connection here. So, so developers, they required the access, they required some data from the suppose SQL server. Then they can log into the HANA database. Then they can pull the data. They can club the SQL data and HANA data. They can club it here. So this way developers, they need. So that's why SAP introduced the data provisioning concept here, which means after creation of the remote data source, the developers will create the developers will do the remote connections. They will work on the systems here. So here to create the remote connections, what we have to do, there is a certain procedure here. Suppose the respective systems, the drivers, we have to install it here. So it is the ODBC, ODBC, JDBC, JDBC drivers. How the connections will work? Why? Because this is a non-HANA database, SQL Server, this is the HANA. Between two databases, how the connections work here. So depends upon the drivers here. So the drivers configuration we have to perform in the our systems here. So the drivers we have to install it, then we can perform the connection here. So then only the connectivity will work here. Once the connection will work, then the developers, they can pull the data from the, the remote sources here remote sources, they will pull the data from the remote sources here. That is the concept here. The next one is the security. Just this is the ANA security here. ANA users creation, ANA roles creation. Normally, we are logging with the system user here. Normally, we are using the system user, system user to connect to the HANA database. I am also using the system user. Everybody using the system user. Then where is the security here? Where is the security concept here? If any, where is the security concept here? If someone log into the, uh, I am also using the system user here, right? So if everyone is using the system user, then someone deletes, who can I point out here, right? So that is the purpose here. So we have to create the individual user IDs here. Same SAP level, how we have the individual user IDs here, same way we can create the individual user IDs in this year. So that if we create the individual user IDs here, what will happen? Everybody, they will log in with their own user. Then they can do their activity here. If something wrong, we can find out who did what. Then 
we can ask them some questions here. So that is the HANA security that I will explain separately here. Separate, there is a discussion HANA security. That time I will explain the HANA security concept here. So this is about the HANA studio. These are the tab folders here. If you right click on, if you right click on here, system DB or uh, standard DB, you have the some tabs here. See here, administration. Administration means same administration tool tabs here. So life cycle management here. Life cycle management here. HANA life cycle management. In the life cycle management we have, so HANA application life cycle management purely application team, application team means application team, they will do the, so some them data exports and import options, we can perform it here. Then platform life cycle management here. Here we can use the HANA updates, components, updates, all kind of information. We can do it from the HANA platform life cycle management here. HANA platform life cycle management here. So life cycle management are the two types here. One is the application life cycle management, then platform life cycle management here. Application life cycle management, application team. Application team will do the some application developments. They will move the changes, all kind of work. They will perform it here, right? Platform life cycle management. Platform life cycle management is for, platform life cycle management is for, so to do the some uh, ANA updates, ANA upgrades, all kind of work we can perform is in the platform life cycle management here. Backup recovery this is a separate concept, security separate concept as I told, HANA console. So some queries and everything we can write open in the HANA console here. In the SQL console, we can write some queries here. We can execute it from here, HANA console here, right? So then HANA modelers. So the developers, the developers will work on this tab, HANA modelers here. We can add the system to different user. We can remove it. So properties here. You can see the properties here. In the properties file, we have, so if you see the HANA properties here, here we have the, so additional properties. So what is the port here? It is used. This is a very important here. What is the port will be used to connect to the HANA studio from HANA studio to database here? Three instance number 15. That is the port number here. So you can see that the property is, you can see three instance number 15 here. This is a very important here. If this port is active, we can connect to HANA, HANA, HANA databases from studio. Through studio, we can connect it here. We can connect it from here, right? So it's on the property screen. We can do that one here, right? So this is the JDBC trace not required license, HANA license here. So now let's start discussing about the HANA license here, right? HANA licensing here. HANA licensing concept here. HANA licensing. So what does it mean by HANA licensing here? So SAP license, where can we apply the SAP license? What is the transaction code to apply the license? Yes, license. Yes, license. Yes, license. Yes, license. Yes, license, right? So, same way, same way for the HANA, HANA, HANA is the database where we have to apply the license means using the, using the, where we have to apply the license means here. So, here, HANA license means here. So, in the HANA studio, in the HANA studio, in the license tab, in the HANA studio, in the license tab, we can apply it here. In the license tab, so we can just click on the install button. We can apply the license here. But so what does it mean HANA license here? So let's start discussing about the HANA license types of HANA license here. In the HANA we have, so there is a two types of license we have. HANA, when you install the HANA, by default, you will get the temporary license here. Temporary license, HANA licensing, we have temporary license here, temporary license here. By default, you will get the temporary, temporary license here, temporary license here. Then 
one more thing is the permanent license permanent temporary license and permanent license here so temporary license is valid only so temporary license is valid only so 90 days only 90 days only so when you install the hana database by default you will get the temporary license the temporary license is valid only 90 days if you want to see right click on the folder go to the properties here license then you see the 90 days here so november 15th we have start date right installed and then november december january february which means three months here up to 90 days only this is valid here so once it is done your license will be expired your temporary license will be expired once the hana temporary license is expired then hana will be hana db hana db will be locked hana db will be locked for operations so means data ana will be locked ana database will not work that is the main thing here so within this 90 days time we need to get the permanent license from the sap we have to go to the service marketplace license tab we need to get the license from the sap here permanent license from the sap here in the permanent license also we have the two types here again in the permanent license we have the two types here right so one is the limited second one is the unlimited here which means so enforced enforced license second one is like un enforced enforced and unenforced license here so enforced enforced license means enforced license means so permanent license so enforced license means here so it's a temporary it's a limit i mean to say it's a limit it's a limited license here so suppose actually basically hana license is depends upon the your main memory Ana license is not for the CPU, not for the how many users and everything. Ana license is depends upon the how much memory you want to use it. Only you have to you have to get the license for that one. Means GB's memory. How much you want to use it? Suppose you have the one terabyte license. You want to use the one terabyte memory. Then you need to purchase the one terabyte license from SAP here. Then so then they will provide the one terabyte license to you then you are only limited to use only that particular amount of limit only not for all not for all here so in that case what we have to do here we need to purchase the limited license limited license we have to purchase from sap here limited license we have to purchase suppose example i will explain it here unenforced means unlimited you can use how much you want to use you can use it that is called the unenforced this is the limited this is the unlimited how this will work here how this will work suppose this is your hana database okay this is hana database here so you have this is the ram slot here this is the ram slot right the ram slot here this is the one terabyte ram this is the one terabyte of ram is available here one terabyte ram is available here one terabyte ram is available here so but but you purchased the license, you purchased the enforced license, you don't want to use one terabyte now, you purchased license only 500 GB only, you purchased the license only 500 GB only, 500 GB license only you purchased, right? 500 GB only you purchased here. Then HANA will start using from 0 GB, 1, 2 GB, 3 GB, it will start filling the DB, 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 when the limit your licensing limit is licensing limit is 500 gb only you are using the enforced your licensing limit is 500 gb only then when the limit is reached when the limit is reached your hana database will go down status will be locked from the operations even though you have remaining 500 gb free is there even though hana will not use here hana will not use here so enforced license, unenforced license means it's unlimited here. So you can will use like how much RAM you have. This will use the that much of memory here. 
that much of memory. So that is the difference between the enforced and unenforced. Suppose example, we have prepaid recharge cards, right? Prepaid recharge cards. So when you prepaid recharge, mobile recharge, if you recharge 50 rupees, you will get the 35 rupees or 40 rupees balance you will get. So you are entertained to use up to 40 rupees only, 40 rupees limit only. Then after that, your call will get, get disconnected. Then you will not call to the your friend. Right? That is the enforced, the limited one. Unenforced means it's a postpaid. Postpaid means, so it's a postpaid. Monthly bill you will get, you can just pay it. That's it. But unenforced, unlimited calls, unlimited recharge, unlimited all those things. Then how much time you want to speak to your friend, then you can speak to the, your friend. That is the unlimited, unlimited package here. So simple understanding purpose, I will told you that difference here. So limited and unlimited here. So, so limited means you have one terabyte RAM you purchased. Now it's like 250 GB occupied. Now tomorrow your database, database means data will come to the database level. The data will get increased, right? And our usage will get start increasing. Data, data, maybe one year, one and a half year, or one year, one year, one year. Then after that, at particular year, your database is full. Why? Because you have license, license limit only 500 GB. When it reaches to the 500 GB, your production will be down. Production will not accept any data here. Why? Because your limit is only this one. Then, so it will be down status here. Suppose if you purchase the unenforced, so then, you are how much RAM is there? This much of it will start using the that much of RAM here. So there is unlimited, it's a unlimited one. So that is the difference between the HANA licensing limited and unlimited, limited and unlimited here. Got it? Any questions from anyone? It's very important HANA licensing. You know, yes, the types of licensing temporary. Sir, uh, when you're using the uh, uh, in SAP, no? so we use like hardware key. To get the license. Yes. Here also, right. here also hardware key will be there. When you open the HANA studio properties, you will see the hardware key here. So based upon this hardware key, based upon the SID, we will generate the license from service marketplace. Okay. So first we need to add this. The procedure will be seen for SAP and HANA license too. Sorry? Applying license the procedure will be same yeah yes same just to just click on the install button so you will get the license file normally in sap we will get the license file right just apply it here then your license will be installed here here temporary will go permanent license will get here no, no, sir. from uh, service marketplace how you integrate it so first we need to add the system right right System, uh, we can register the systems. It's on, uh, it's uh, it's not uh, that much of hard to register the systems here. So very simple here to register the systems into the service marketplace. So I will show you. So if you all are okay with this one, I will pause the recording and I will show you in the my service marketplace here. Is there any questions on the here? Licensing part in the HANA Studio. This parts. Sir, licensing license type is uh, temporary rights are here. Currently, we have the temporary license. Temporary, okay. Uh, in the real time, we will we will get the permanent license, and will it show enforced? Or, uh... Yes. Hmm? It will show. So depends upon the uh, depends upon the uh, your agreement with the SAP. It will show here. Unenforced. So if enforced, enforced will show. Unenforced, it won't show. So in unenforced, it won't show here. It's very unlimited, right? So it won't show unenforced like this here. But so we have two types we have. Two types we have here. So but one more thing is here, sir, we forgot to renewal the so unenforced. So this enforced also there is a limitation and also and also there is a limit. There is a limit here. Up to one year, two years, you will get the this limitations here, right? Then once the limit is over, once the permanent license also the limit, the, the date is over, what will happen? So again, 28 days, 28 days, you will get the temple license again, temple license. 
temple items you will get. After within 20 days, again, you need to request, you need to request the permanent license, which means, I will give you an example. So initially, when your system installed, 90 days temporary license you will get. Within this 90 days, you need to request, you need to work with the SAP to get the permanent license. So that permanent license also every one year or every three years depends upon the your agreement with the customer that will be expired. So one year, suppose example, one year, again, you need to renewal the permanent license here. So you forgot it. Maybe that person got uh, relieved from the organization, that person you got forgot it. Then in this case, your permanent license limit also, not the limit, the license expiry date. Every license, there is an expiry date here. The expiry date is over here. The license, the expiry date is over here. Then what will happen? Again, permanent license expiry date over again, there is a temp license. Temporary license will be installed automatically after the permanent license. This is only temporary license. 28 days only you will get here. 28 days temporary license you will get once permanent license is expired. Within this 28 days, again, you need to request the permanent license again from the SAP. That is what, how it will work. Actually, you mentioned temporary license here 90 days. What are you yeah. telling? First time, first time, first time 90 days. Then, then you will apply the permanent license, right? The permanent license also expired. You forgot to renew the license. Then, uh, license is like permanent license expired means immediately system it won't go down. Immediately, the temporary license will be applied, auto applied here. That will be the 28 days only. Again, you won't get the temporary license 90 days. Just to, you will get that 28 days only. This will, this is that during the installation, during the first installation, you will get the 90 days. Then after that, you will apply the permanent license. Then permanent license will be expired. Then what in this case? So 28 days temporary license you will get. So even 28 days also, you have not acknowledged, you have not responded. What will happen? Database will be locked. You won't, then, then again, after 28 days, then again, it won't it won't get renewal. It won't go to extend. Then you need to get the permanent license. You have to apply it. Okay. Here only small confusion here. Temporary license the first ninety days. Why again after that twenty eight days means that is the concept. Again, you won't get the twenty days here. So if you get the ninety days, you can survey right. So SAP will give you second time. You will SAP will give only twenty eight days only. Automatically, the dates will be taken by the SAP only. You no need to do anything. Automatically, the temporary license will be applied here. Okay. So oh, now I will show you how to get the how to renewal the license here. How to request the license. How to how to get that how to add the systems. How to get the license here. Okay. So in this case, what I am doing, I am stopping the recording. I will not record this session. Next. Uh, service market play session okay 